Welcome back to part two of the terrain tutorial series. This is part of the magic market tutorial series in which we were responsible for the terrain and all of the environment assets. So this is a bit of an intermediary part in that we're not actually going to be creating anything as such, but I do want to show you the process behind what this is. So we're going to go over how you would create textures using cops because in the next part, part three of our terrain tutorial, we're going to be using some procedurally generated textures that we made using cops inside of our terrain. Now, the actual process of creating a texture is somewhat of an artistic process, so it's up to your interpretation. But what I want to show you are the processes involved in doing such a thing. So here I have a Houdini file, and this was our R&D file. So this is what we use to test our texturing. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. Let's dive inside of this copnet and go to the composite view. So over here, we start with a color and you can just drop down a color node. And what that will give you is the option to choose any color. So I like to do it this way because what you can do is build up your displacement map first and then feed that into a recolor sort of process. And from there, you can generate your diffuse maps, right? So starting with this basic color over here, you can do things with VopCop filters. So if you dive inside any of these VopCop filters, you'll notice pretty much the same thing in each one. We have global variables, a float to vector, the noises, and then a vector to float. So what is this process? Well, generally, when you're working with noises, you feed in a position value. Right? You can see over here we're feeding in a position value, but when you're working with cops, you're working in a two-dimensional space, X and Y. So you're not given the position value. Right? You don't have a P attribute to use. So a good thing to do is to use a float to vector. And then you take the X and Y, because you are given the X and Y, so X and Y of this square that we're seeing. Feed that into a float to vector, so you're now getting a vector which you can use as the position. Then the noise that you get out of that, you put into a vector to float because the output doesn't take a single vector for color, it takes R, G, and B. So you take value one, two, and three from your noise, and that gives you your R, G, B value. So this is something you'll see often. So right over here, we have a large noise, and then we adjust it using levels, right? So you can adjust the input and output levels. In this case, we're increasing the input levels, because that allows us to get more of a contrast going on. So we also have a medium noise, which is much of the same, except now we're using two noises. We're using a Perlin standard in both cases, except we're offsetting and changing frequencies and then mixing them together, right? So it's just two of them basically overlapped. And you do the same thing where you convert that noise into your color. So then you run that through levels as well, and it gives you a better contrasted noise, and then you multiply these two together. So you're multiplying your large noise by your medium noise, and you're getting this. So this multiply node over here has some options. In this case, these are the defaults. Now what this allows is basically what you would do in Photoshop, right? This is the layer operation. You're taking one layer, you're taking another layer, and you're combining them in one way or another. So over here, we also have clumping. As you can see, it's just these small pieces. And this is done with, once again, more unified static noises. You can see it's Perlin on every single one of these with very high frequencies. We're then fitting them. So we're pushing up things like the source min to remove any low values. So you're only getting the upper end of the values. So that's something that the fit is useful for. It's for cutting out certain areas of a range. We also have this one down here, multiply them all together and you get a very high contrast, interesting looking effect. You output that once again, put that through levels, give it a bit of a blur and comp them. This time we're not multiplying, this time we're just using over. Now the over operation is just putting one on top of the other and each one has a particular weight. So as you can see, you can make it so that only the one actually does anything, but we push this quite far up over here. So a reasonably high value, but you can see some of the detail coming through. So that's just a minor detail thing. Then over here, we've got cracks. And this is something that's pretty cool about cops is that there are many ways of generating different shapes and different patterns. And if you go inside of here, you'll see that we do the same thing. You're taking your X and Y, feeding it to a float to vector to fake a position, 
feeding that into what would usually be your UVs in this case, and then we're using the crackle. So we're getting this interesting shaping over here, vector to float to set it back to a color, and then levels, we're really pushing up the lower end, expand to make these lines thinner and to break them up a bit, then blur that and composite. This composite we're multiplying again. So multiply works in that if you have a light area and you're multiplying it by a light area, you will get a light area. But if you've got a light area and you're multiplying it by a dark area, you'll get the dark area. So why that's useful is that if you have this crackling like this and you multiply it over here, you can see that sort of crackling and it sits under the rest of the noise, right? So it adds a bit more detail. Now, this is where things get pretty interesting. This over here, as you can see, these look like rocks, right? It looks like we have rocks sitting on our image. And that's because we do. So over here, we have this rocks and twigs area. Now you'll notice that it is a sub import and it's importing from a particular place and coming through as a black and white image, right? And we have a couple of these. Each one is a bit different. So how do you make these? And how is this procedural? Well, this clearly isn't a noise. This is coming from a SOP network. So we can take a look at this. If we dive into the SOP net, you'll notice that over here, we have a switch node with some stamping. So we stamp the different types of geometry and copy them to points, right? So we're copying some of these little rocks to points. And then you take a height field. So you've seen this before. In part one, we use the height field to actually create terrain. In this case, we're using the height field project to get this. We're projecting all of these rocks onto a height field. And this height field can be fed into the COP network. So you have this one over here, a smaller version over here, and finally some dry grass over here. And this one is just a few curves turned to a poly wire, and you have different variations and you copy them to points and then project them, right? So that's what you get. The awesome thing about that is in the copnet, you can use these. So you bring them in with the SOP import, you override the size, and then you just scale it down, right? So you scale it down to a particular resolution to match the grid that you're going to put it onto. You can adjust the levels over here, and let's take a look at what this is giving us. So these are our small rocks, these are our slightly bigger rocks, and then these are the pieces of dry grass. When you composite those, you end up with something very interesting. So this one over here is using the screen. So the layer node over here, is also using screen. And when you screen them all on top of each other, you end up with this. So a very interesting looking texture. You're fetching a lot of your detail from these noises and then filling in any sort of details that you can't fake with noise by actually sub importing in geometry. And so you end up with this and then we crop it. And this is basically the displacement. So you have your ground displacement out and you can just use this as a displacement and it will work perfectly fine. But that's not all that you would want from this. You would also want your roughness. So you get your roughness by putting this through levels and you can sort of fake this. Maybe you think that the rocks are rougher, so you do this and you put it through levels and that gives you a roughness out. Then over here, what you want to do is actually give this a color. So now you're taking this null over here with your noise and feeding it into this cop network. Inside of here, once again, we're doing that whole noise thing and you're ramping just with a color. And so this is your base color. And the only reason that this is connected is actually to get the size because this isn't actually being used. There is no relation between this image and this over here. The only relationship is the size of this square. So you feed this into a blend. Now, the cool thing about the blend is you can mix between two colors. So you mix between this base color and this rock color over here. Once again, this is a constant color, which is exactly the same as the white that we started with. So the blend takes one input, a second input, and it blends between them based on a third input. The third input being this over here. So now you can color the rocks separately. So that gives you this. And once again, you do the same thing, but this time with the twigs or the dry grass rather. And then you do the same thing with the last rocks, just like that. And these ones are a bit different in that what you're doing is you're taking a color, you're putting it through a noise, you're driving levels, and you're using this as the second input. And what that results in is rocks that have variation on them. So you can see that each rock looks a bit different, right? Each one has a slightly different color. And then that is your diffuse out. The only other thing that you would do is use this ROP comp and you would just save this out. So you save this out somewhere on your computer, output picture, and you just take the color plane C, right? C is color and you take your alpha and that's that. So that is the idea behind a cop texture. 
So you can texture using cups and end up with a displacement map, a roughness map, and of course your diffuse map. And all of this is procedural and done in Houdini. The reason we did this was actually a proof of concept. We wanted to see what sort of quality textures we could get just using the native functions of Houdini, the native built-in noises and options for cops. And it turns out you can get some decent results. So that's all for this part. This was just an intermediary part. And so I hope that you can take away a few little tips from here and use it to build up your own textures. So that's all for this tutorial. And I will see you in part three of the terrain tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.